Good morning. I'm here on behalf of Millie Peas today to talk about this awesome sewing machine called the TL210Q Juki. And this is their newest model. It is wonderful. We're going to start with a little bit of oiling first. I'm going to show you some general maintenance that's going to make your machine run forever, literally. So we're going to start with the oiling ports and we have one here, one drop in each one. One here, one here. Then we're going to come down to the base of the machine and we have four different places. Two of them in the front are, those are if you are going to put um, something in here that would uh, screw in that would be for a if you have a bar say that you want to screw in here for like a 5 8 inch seam or whatever you want to put something more than just the plate the other two positions are oilers so i'm going to put a drop in here i'm going to put a drop in here then we're going to open up the end we're going to take out the bobbin Oh, the bobbin's already taken out. Sorry, that's good. And we're going to put a drop right in the race part. Right there is where we put a drop. Then, when we're done with that, I close the door. Now, I'm going to lay this on the side because I want you to see another area for cleaning. If we go behind us here, there's a little trap door. We just open this little door up and remove it. Now you can get in here for if you have any threads or if there's anything at all, you can clean all of that out. This is something you don't have with any other machine on the market. Okay, now I'm going to also show you how you are going to be able to take your plate, your uh, presser foot, all of that off. You have a nice little screwdriver. This is meant strictly for this machine. And there's different areas on the machine. There's a short one, a long one, and there's a little bitty one right here. This is to adjust your bobbin, uh, your bobbin case. So you have a screw on your bobbin case. This fits right in to the screw so you can loosen or tighten. Remember it's righty tighty, lefty loosey if you ever have to adjust your bobbin case. We're going to take off this because I want you to see these. I think first of all I'll take off the foot. These have never been taken off before so I think a man tightened it on. And then this right will also take your needle out. Now I've just changed the needle so I'm not going to it this time but if I did well maybe I should take it out to show you. There is a flat side of the needle and with this machine the flat side of the needle would go toward the inside just so that you know that. I'm going to set it right here but that is a new needle. I'm going to take the base off first time around might be a little bit tighter to get it off, but they do come off. This is all part of your general maintenance. And I would tell you if you're sewing on fleece or if you're sewing on cuddle or anything like that, you're going to want to make sure that you keep this area really nice and clean. Because this, you know, the cleaner your machine is, the better it's going to run for you. Now this whole piece will come off. So then underneath, you can see this machine has not, of course, it hasn't been used a ton. Um, but we've got the little brushes that come with the machine and you're going to always want to make sure that you get all this cleaned out. There are slots in between the feed dogs. Make sure that you take your little brush area on the end and that will run right in there to clean out if you have a lot of fuzz. That'll just pull it right out of there. So you just keep this really nice and clean. 
So I always go in and make sure that there's nothing left. Never ever under any circumstances blow into your machine. By blowing into the machine, you're going to pack it in there somewhere where you don't want it. So now I'm gonna put this back on and you can see how it's bowed. So you start with one of the screws in the back and you start putting the, the back screw on first. And I usually use my finger to start it. Once I get it started a little bit, then I'll start the front one. Then you can come in here and you can use the screwdriver. And you don't need to tighten it as tight as it was the first time I took this off. That is, I've never ever had my machine that tight. I own a Juki, by the way, and I absolutely love it. I like it because I like speed when I sew, and it does 1,500 stitches per minute. Most machines do about 600, that's average. So you know how much faster this machine is gonna sew for you. So it, it is a definite workhorse, it's metal. They don't make a lot of metal sewing machines anymore either, but Juki has not changed their way of doing things for years. And they used to be strictly an industrial machine and one of the best on the market. Okay, so now I have that on. Now, remember, I'm gonna take the flat side of the needle when I insert this up inside of here. and push it up as far up as you can get it. And then with your screwdriver, you can tighten this up. Okay, then you can put the foot back on. And by the way, this is your quarter inch foot, one of the best. You're gonna get a nice scant quarter inch with this. You don't have to worry about uh, getting any other foot. It's not necessary. Now I have the bobbin. If you open up the bobbin case like this, the bobbin doesn't fall out. They tell you to hold on to this till you get it in there and then close it. I find I have a much harder time doing that to get it to click in. You always want your bobbin, you wanna hear a click when you put this in. So what I do is I just leave it closed, I slip it in there and I, push with my finger. I'm sure you heard that click. Then you know that that is in. Don't ever, under any circumstances, sew if you don't hear that click because it's not all the way in there. Okay, now we, are, we have this done. We've gone through a little bit of general maintenance. So now I'm gonna talk about the other features of the machine. We have the threads area. We want always to have this telescoped in the highest position there is. We have two different cones that we can use. This is for the actual big cone. So you can put that right in there. And I'm going to wind a bobbin for you. I want all of you to see how a bobbin gets wound. So my thread is on the cone side, or if I had the spool side, I could put this one on here. I'm using the cone side this time. Here is the thread guide, and what I'm doing is I'm snapping it in, twisting it around. I go from the front clockwise around. Then I have a bobbin that what I'm gonna do here is you have, you have uh, a little notch on the bobbin that you can thread through. So I'm gonna do that and you wanna go from the inside out. So I'm gonna thread it from the inside out. So it's like this. Now there is a notch in here, whoop, this came out. There is a notch in here 
on the bottom here, on bottom or top, you can see when that is, you can feel and see when that's where it belongs. Then there's a lever, you push the lever, see when that's where it belongs. Then there's a lever, you push the lever in. So we've got the cord that fits in, and we have the foot pedal that ha where you can actually wind it up underneath so it doesn't have to. Don't ever take your cords and like, wrap them up in your hand. You'll end up breaking the uh, wires that are inside the cord of your foot pedal. It's not a good idea. So now that I have, I'm going to turn the machine on and the light will come on when you have it on. So now I'm going to hold on to the thread to start with on my bobbin winder. And after I wind it a little bit, I'm going to trim that off. It will automatically stop, so then you take the lever, flip it back, cut it off, and now we're ready to go on with threading the sewing machine. So again, I'm using the cone thread. I'm through the, the lever on the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm threading it in the front here. So we've got three little guides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the bottom up on one, I'm going to skip the middle one. Then I'm going to go again from the bob bottom up on the other one. So it's going to go up, twist around, up. And now we're ready to go through the first guide. There is a tension disc here. And another thing, always make sure that your foot is up when you are threading your machine because that keeps the tension discs open. Now we're going to go to the second one. We're going to come up and around. We're going to catch on to the take up lever, go underneath this lever, through here, up here, back down through the same one. There's a little one here. There's one here. Now at this point, we're ready to use the thread guide. But what I'm going to tell you to do next is hit your needle up, needle down. This is going to put the needle in the correct position for using the needle threader. Now you're going to lower the presser foot. Anytime you use your needle threader, the presser foot must be down. We're going to push down right here. We're going to go behind and in front. And when you pull it up, it's right there, just like that. So it works beautifully. It may take you a few times. Don't get frustrated. Just work with it because it's going to be so helpful for you to be able to do that. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is a few little features with the machine. This is the speed control right here. It goes from the tortoise to the rabbit. I always leave mine in rabbit. I can control my machine with my foot pedal. But if you can't, this is your adjustment right here from slow to super fast, very super fast. You have a thread cutter here. You have needle up, needle down here. So I can, this determines whether my needle is going to always stop down or if it's going to stop up. That's up to you. Here's your reverse button. This one right here is, this controls your feed dogs. I just dropped my feed dogs. You can see that the bar is above the feed dogs. Okay. Now when I want feed dogs back, I flip it back like this, but you have to make one complete rotation of the flywheel to get the feed dogs to come back up. So if you ever lower them and you flip it back over and they don't come up, don't panic. Just do one complete rotation and the feed dogs will rise back up. Now we have a wonderful from zero. I usually leave mine around between two and a little more for my stitches per inch. And here we can go up to a nice six basting, which is a nice basting. So if you do any of that, it's wonderful. Just works really great, really great. Um, next thing, 
we have a beautiful table. This is your table. And with the table comes a knee lift. I would strongly recommend everyone gets used to their knee lift. This is an extra hand. So if you say you're going to do machine quilting or anything that you're going to perhaps do, you need to have this. So this means you can do all kinds of quilting. Maybe you want to pivot. So you're going to use your knee, pivot and keep sewing. Pivot, keep sewing. This is amazing. You have to learn how to use it. Now with the table, you have six legs with this table. This is the new style. So you want to engage the legs up and all six, turn it over. Now this will just slide in, turn it over. Now this will just slide in. I have the table on and I want to show you the thickness of what this machine can do. It is a workhorse, I'm telling you. Now these are a lot of, this is a lot of thickness in here. So I'm just going to show you to start with how this one works. Now I'm going to double this over. Now you know how thick this would be. Thick. So we're going to show you how this works. It goes through this, it goes through this like butter. How many machines do you know can do this? Not many. Okay, so then I'm going to show you, uh, I want to show you the basting. Remember I told you about the six? I'm going to set it on a six and I'm just going to go around here. Say you wanted to baste, you want, now I want it, I'm ending needle down, which is exactly what I want. And this is kind of a little bit tight, which is telling me that I need to make another adjustment where it wouldn't do that. Just going to baste all the way around here and then I'm going to show you free motion quilting. Now your foot pedal has options of uh, cutting your fabric, cutting your thread I mean. So what you do is go forward for your gas, click back on your heel for the thread cutter as well as a thread cutter up above. You can do whichever one you want to do. That's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to change feet. I have the free motion foot, so I'm going to put that one on. I'm going to drop the feed dogs. So I've got the free motion foot on. And I like using the, I mean, I've got such a nice big table, I can use these beautiful gypsy hoops. I love them. They're so nice. So what I'm going to do, lower the presser foot. Boy, that seems really tight. Take the pressure off. This is the pressure part. So I'm going to crank it all the way up, as far as it'll go. Still rather tight, but we'll see how it does. I always bring my thread to the top, even though you have a thread cutter, I like doing that. Then I'm going to use my hoop to do my moving. Stitches look beautiful. If 
for some reason you were to use a hoop, this one is wonderful because you can just slip it in and out. And you always want the opening to the back if you're going to do that because that works the best. And this is just so easy to work with. Now, when I'm done with this, I'm going to take three stitches in the same spot. And I'm going to have needle up. Then I can come over here, lift my presser foot up, pull up a little bit. I'm going to clip right at the base. And now you can see I have no knots of any kind. And it worked out absolutely beautiful. The stitches are great. This machine is wonderful for machine quilting. If you want to do some of your own things at home, this is the machine to have. If you use the buttonholer, I'll show you how that you're going to use that. Take my feed dogs back up. I mean, I'm not, sh I'm, I'm sorry, I said button holder. I mean zipper foot. Sorry about that. But you, you have to set this up. This needle does not, you don't, you can't move the needle back and forth, side to side. So what you have to do is you move the bar in the back, you move that side to side so that your needle will clear if you're sewing on this side or you're going to put it over here for this side and always make sure that your needle clears. So that's how you would use this zipper foot. It is, it's great. It works wonderful. It also comes with a heavy duty walking foot. This walking foot is, it's an industrial walking foot. It's wonderful. And this is very easy also to put on. All we do on this one Now, you know, when you use a walking foot, you always want your feed dogs up. The only way you don't have your feed dogs up is if you're doing free motion quilting like I just did. When you put the walking foot on, it goes wraps around the bar here and the claw goes over your needle bar. So this is one that you have to find the little, you have to take the screw all the way out for this one. Then you put it back on. Be sure to tighten this up. And now we're going to be ready to go and I'll show you how great this works. I'm going to take my presser, pressure back down and I run it so it's just above the middle dot. There's three dots here and I run mine just above the middle dot and it, it seems to be perfect. Okay, I'm going to turn my numbers down. Absolutely perfect. Perfect stitching. This is top of the line machine. Everything I, that I have to show you on this machine. Um, it's very simple to use. You, you get an instruction manual and the manual is very, it's very simple. It's written very well. Uh, I know of absolutely nothing that you couldn't find in the manual here, but this, you'll probably never even, I mean, once you thread this up and once you start using it, you probably never need the manual again. I want to talk a little bit about a few of the accessories that I used on this video today. One of them is the gypsy uh, hoops. And what's marvelous about these is you get a small one. So if you have a machine, a smaller machine at home, you can always use the smaller one. Then there's the large one, and that's the one I used today in the demonstration. The, what I love about this is you can see the grippers that are on the bottom of this, which once you put it down, it's effortless, absolutely effortless to be able to move your fabric around. This is just an absolute plus. Another thing that I like is the Caterpillar Light, and I have this on my Juki at home as well because it lights up your area beautifully. Here's off. One, two, 
three. So if you're in a, a darker area, maybe you don't have quite the bright lighting that um, overhead lighting that you might need for this. If you put one of these on, it just illuminates the whole surface that you're working with. So these are a couple of the things that I like to use that I use on mine at home. I've had a Juki for years. Um, I have other machines as well, but this is my workhorse machine. So if you're somebody that likes to sew a lot and you don't need a lot of complicated stitches or that type of thing, if you just are a quilter, this is a quilter's dream. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you now. Bye-bye.